Hi, and welcome to the second part of this video series on the Swedish SJ sound. I'm Adam, and in this video I'll explain when and how the different versions of the SJ sound are used. Unless you already feel confident in your pronunciation of both the front and back version of the SJ sound, I recommend watching part one of this series before watching this one. I'd also like to once again underline that there's considerable variation regarding this sound, and that my classifications presented in this video should be taken as general approximations rather than absolute truths. Alright, as I explained in part 1, most Swedish speakers use both a front and a back SJ sound according to a pattern. This pattern is generally regular, and with it you'll be able to predict whether to use a front or back version of the SJ sound. Ready? The back H sound is used before a stressed vowel, as in sked, regi, position. With few exceptions, it's also used before vowels in syllables that precede the stressed one, as in giraff, choklad, tragedi. The front sh sound is used after a stressed vowel, as in dusch, hysha. Prestige. A single exception to this is the interjection ush, which is commonly also pronounced as uch. The front sh sound is also used when a consonant stands between it and the stressed vowel, as in schweiz, schnitzel, branch, much. Compounds generally keep the sj sound of the original parts of the word, meaning that words like särskild and tesked have a back one, and a word like plyshapa retains a front one. A notable exception is kanske, which can also be pronounced kanske. There are also a couple of compounds where an sj sound has arisen due to assimilation, such as össköta and vässköta. Assimilation also occurs in place names such as nässkö. In all of these cases, the back version of the sound is used. So, to reinforce how it's done, Let's go through a bunch of words and apply these rules to them. Sju. Chock. Skina. Själar. Besked. Passion. Geni. Chiffong. Regissör. Fräsch. Duscha. Bråscher, garage, gulasch, schlager, schweizisk, lunch, marsch, utskällning, jätteschans, veckoschema, mustascholja, bagageutrymme, Montageskena. Prestigeskäl. This pattern is the norm in Central Swedish, which means that it's the most common way of pronouncing the SJ sound in Sweden, as well as the pattern associated with the standard language. Okay, but where exactly are this and the other various patterns actually used? Let's have a look at the geography, shall we? We'll start with the areas using only front SJ sounds, at least historically. As you can see, this area covers mainland Finland, the northernmost parts of Sweden, two areas along the Norwegian border as well as northeastern Stockholm. However, we want to specify this a little bit, as speakers in Finland commonly have a slightly different variation of the front SJ sound than those in Sweden, as you might recall from the first part. Secondly, we have the area using only back SJ sounds. This area is concentrated to southern mainland Sweden. In this area, particularly in the south, the labiodental feature of the sound tends to be prominent. And finally, we have the area using both front and back SJ sounds according to the pattern presented earlier. This area covers the central parts of Sweden, but is also common in some areas in northern Sweden and in parts of Finland. In this area, the labiodental component of the back SJ sound tends to be less prominent than in the south and may not be present at all. There are two things to note about this geographical distribution. First thing, these borders are very approximate. There's a lot of variation down on the individual level 
and it's not unusual for a speaker to occasionally pronounce words according to another pattern than the one they use normally. Second thing, since the mixed yellow pattern is a normal one in Central Standard Swedish, this pattern is currently the most expansive, and you are more likely to encounter this pattern among native speakers from the north or the south than vice versa. In Finland, on the other hand, the front purple pattern is the pattern used in the standard language. Historically, however, the front red pattern was the standard pattern in Sweden until well into the 20th century. The front SJ sound was the only version used by educated speakers, and it was the one heard on television, on stage, and on the radio, as well as the one taught to foreigners. This explains the tendency for many textbooks and dictionaries of Swedish to indicate only a single pronunciation of the SJ sound even today. Of course, such a situation is no longer the case, but the old associations of prestige linger for this pronunciation, and it's not uncommon for people to use this sound when they're trying to pronounce something in an overly formal or fancy way. This brings us to the social variation. It so happens that we can put the front and the back SJ varieties into three contrastive pairs when it comes to age, class, and gender. The front SJ sound is more common with older speakers, while the back SJ sound is more common with younger speakers. The front SJ sound is more common with upper social classes, and the back SJ sound with lower ones. Finally, the front SJ sound is more common with women, the back SJ sound being more common with men. Now, these social variations are generally less important than geography. Most people do tend to use the SJ sound of their respective area, but sometimes it does matter, especially in areas where two different patterns meet. In the areas of Stockholm, where the front SJ sound still is common, social class does tend to be an important factor as to who uses it. And in the northernmost part of Sweden, it's actually quite common for women to have a front SJ sound only, while men instead follow the mixed pattern. This social variation is visible in other areas too, although usually not as prevalently. For example, a woman from central Sweden would be more likely to occasionally use a front SJ sound instead of a back one, while a man from the same area would be inclined to occasionally do just the opposite. And here, I conclude this second video about the Swedish SJ sound. In the following third part, we'll go through all of the various spellings, and why they aren't really that bad. Thank you for watching, and see you in part 3.